Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a good service so far. My name is Daniel Daly. I am giving the talk today. So, Passover. Uh, yeah, it's basically um, a really interesting time for for the for the Jewish nation because they they uh, year after year are called to remember how God delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh, um, uh, from the oppression of Pharaoh, um, out of Egypt, and didn't allow death to, to come amongst them, but pass over them whenever it saw the blood of a, an unspotted lamb on the doorposts. And um, scripture really tells us that Christ is our Passover lamb. And uh, it's um, an interesting parallel because what happened to the um, Israelites back then is clearly a foreshadowing of what happened with Jesus on the cross for us. Um, and for our lives so that the, the wrath of God was, was poured out onto, onto Jesus and that ultimately we, we, we were redeemed from out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the hands back to our Father. Um, so it's really powerful in that, that aspect. And um, also this, this idea of, of, of a new covenant, um, Jesus announces again another um, really profound um, moment um, because again it was um, prophesied in in the book of uh, Ezekiel 36 uh, 26 to 27 to be exact where um, uh, they they God announces a new covenant is coming where um, we will be given a new heart um, his spirit in us the Holy Spirit in us and um, a grace to, to to obey his his commands and his laws and so forth and this is really what Jesus was announcing it was that time right then yeah, at that table um, and it was really powerful um, to, to, to see and to read I guess for us who uh, weren't, weren't there um, but blessed are those that um, believe and haven't seen that's what he says yeah so uh, but central to this anyway central to this I want to uh, concentrate on the blood because it's a really um uh, profound thing and it's quite for our sort of western minds we can't sort of get our heads around it a little bit it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a, a weird area for us but um, it's so powerful and it once we have the understanding of it I believe it will really encourage us in our faith and our, and our walk with, with Jesus so um, I'm going to break down seven points about the blood and how it sort of works for us as as believers in the Lord Okay, so point number one, redemption. Okay, uh, Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Again, so Jesus, that, that passage really highlights how we've been brought back um, from, from the kingdom of darkness. Uh, we've been, we've, uh, we have no more uh, sin uh, debt on us, um, Jesus has paid it all at the at the cross, um, and and brought us back back to the Father. Um, he's he's redeemed us, and now we are God's property, so to speak. Um, in Peter one eighteen to nineteen, it says, "Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with precious blood of Christ." as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Again, his, his blood is incorruptible. Um, he lived a perfect sinless life um, and he made that redemption possible once and for all, once, once and for everybody who believes and puts their trust in him. Um, it's beautiful to know that there's no more debt for us to be, to pay, be paid, there's the, the weight is off our shoulders. So we should walk again, as the scriptures say, in, in newness of life. Point number two, cleansing. The precious blood of Jesus, it cleanses us. Uh, 1 John 1 verse 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Again, there's a little bit of a condition there because of that word, if. So it says, if we walk in the light, you know. Uh, so I guess in, in, in that 
if that's the case, then then uh, once once we're walking in the light, then the blood is cleansing us, and once the blood is cleansing us, then we're walking in the light. So it's a it's a perpetual thing that that happens throughout our walk, and so I think it's it's important for us to make sure that we are walking in the light as well, because um, otherwise there's no guarantee that we're being continually cleansed, so to speak. But when we are, then we are continually cleansed. So um, that that's uh, that's, I guess that's how it works. <laughs> um, if we go forward to Psalm 51 now, and, and we, we look at the life of David, he's another really great example of how the blood um, cleanses us. And uh, it's really by faith, you know. Um, David, after he had a massive sin fail, um, he knew God. David really, really knew God. Um, I love the way David, I uh, love looking at David's relationship with God. It's so special. Um, but he knew, I mean, surrounded, especially in that, in that time when the, um, you know, the sacrifice of animals was, was happening, he knew that it, it wasn't about that. He knew that it was just about a simple faith in God. Um, he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. He's talking to God. He's not talking to anybody else. He says, you can do it. You're the one that can make me clean. It's your blood. It's your blood. And again, he's referring to the Passover lamb, but he knows there is a lamb in heaven prepared before time that is going to sacrifice for us and free us of our sins. Um, and he knows once that's done, there is no more debt, you know? So again, that's really, really powerful to know. My third point today is justification. Um, Romans 5 verse 9. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And again, as I mentioned earlier, how um, the Egyptians, it was, it was it, the, the angel of death was passing over Egypt to kill the firstborn and so forth and anyone that was out in the street at that time. And um, it's really, a, 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 again, a foreshadowing of, of the coming judgment of, of God. And now... For those in Christ, God has laid that judgment on Christ so that we don't have to experience the wrath of God. And that again, he paid it with his life. He died, he laid it down for us that we might you know, take up life and walk in newness of life in fellowship with the Father. Um, I mean, this word justification simply means to be, to be made righteous. In, in God's eyes now, because we've been speckled with um, the blood of Christ on our hearts and on our lives, um, we look righteous, completely righteous, completely sin-free. We're perfect. If anything, we can break down that word and say, justified me just as if I'd never sinned. That kind of thing. Yeah, this is what we're dealing with here. <laughs> it's, it's incredible to know that our God has done all of this uh, just for us. Um, he's so good, isn't he? <laughs> Okay, Isaiah 61.10 talks about um, greatly rejoicing in the Lord and how we're covered with a robe of righteousness and the garments of salvation. Again, we should really celebrate this. Uh, we should celebrate Jesus, our Passover lamb, um, because our righteousness is filthy wrecks. You know, all our works, all, all the things we want to act up and, and try and do and work up and pay our way into heaven and all this and that, it's, it's, it stinks before God. But Jesus has covered us, he's, he's paid the debt, and now we're justified, we, we, we need to celebrate this. And so I just want to encourage you again today, um, just, you know, in a prayer today, maybe uh, just celebrate that in, in prayer, just tell God how you feel about that situation that with, with a heart full of gratitude. My uh, fourth point today, sanctification. Hebrews 13 verse 12, therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. So it, this really speaks of, of, of Jesus suffering um, outside of the gate and really separating us from anything that is evil. You know, him suffering on that cross, his blood really sets that divide now. And uh, there's, no there's no association with us and evil anymore at all. 
you know we're completely we're, we're made new in Christ it's so so reassuring um, to know that when we meet him there's not going to be any sort of difficult situation in heaven but that like as long as we're walking in the light and trusting in him then there's sanctification um, the word uh, sanctification the word saint actually comes from the word sanctification so ultimately by his blood we're made saints we're all made saints not just um, Valentine and other and Nicholas and all those uh, special calendar days or Patrick that's it or George even but we're all we're all saints by his blood so I hope that clears something up for you there um, my fifth point today is life and um, the blood of Jesus gives us life um, this is a really um, a, a deep kind of uh, point actually about the blood in John 6 um, 53 to 54 it says that Jesus said to them most assuredly I say to you that's what you know he's being serious when he says most assuredly most assuredly I say to you unless you eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day so again this is God this is this is really interesting because it says we've got we have no life in us unless we drink his blood unless we by faith partake of uh, communion with him and also it has a, a guarantee on it and I will raise him up on the last day so by participating in I guess he's talking particularly about communion here there's a guarantee uh, um, uh, applied to it um, as long as we t take this um, communion by faith kind of thing and by faith uh, we have eternal life and it's a sign that we have eternal life and proclaim that we have eternal life in fact um, a really interesting point in, in some Arab parts of um, of Christendom so to speak um, they have this they, they, they really understand that life is in the blood like uh, where it says in Leviticus uh, that the life um of any flesh is in the blood and so they know that um, by participating in communion um, that Jesus's life is it, they are literally partaking of his life into them they're, they're, they're drinking his blood and so they actually say in some places come let us drink the blood of Jesus obviously because they understand that it is life giving um, but yeah I mean it, it's an interesting one as well because there's many people that believe um, that you know when you partake of the the blood and sorry yeah the blood and the, the flesh or the bread and the wine um, that it sort of translates or it, it somehow tra what's it called transubstantiation where it changes and it's in it changes into the physical blood and the physical body of Jesus somehow but um, whether that's right or whether it's wrong I'm really not too concerned about I'm more concerned about us being um, obedient to what Jesus says he says you know unless you unless you participate in this you you have no life in you kind of thing so I think it's just more about being obedient to God and really just remembering that when we're taking the bread and the wine that we're proclaiming, we're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes okay the next point, my next point is intercession. So the blood of Jesus, it actually speaks, it actually speaks. Okay, so we've got Hebrews uh, 12, 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So it's really interesting how that passage um, ends because we know that the story of Cain and Abel, um, when God looked down, he saw the blood of Abel literally um, crying out from the ground. Um, and so it's a really uh, uh, interesting sort of what they call it juxtaposition of, of the two um, being put together there because you've got Abel's blood 
which was shed against his own will, but then Jesus's blood he gave willingly. Um, you've got Abel's blood that was shed on earth and Jesus's blood, which is sp sprinkled in the Holy of Holies that's in heaven. And then we've got Abel's blood that was crying out for vengeance. And then Jesus's blood, which calls for forgiveness and mercy. And it's that blood that speaks on our, half, our behalf even. It's, it's, it's the blood of Jesus on the mercy seat that, that, um, that acknowledges us, that says he's one, of, he's one of ours, he's one of mine. You know, there's forgiveness on this one kind of thing. And so it should give us um, a, a lot of confidence when we approach him, that we're not to feel um, necessarily ashamed per se, but we, knowing that we've been sprinkled, having, um, having uh, forgiveness and the mercy of God. Um, readily waiting <laughs> to listen to us. Um, my last point is access. So um, Hebrews 10 verse 19 to 22. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, Let's draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So we've got direct access to God. We know that we know that we know because our, we have no evil, our, our, body, our hearts have, have no evil conscience uh, in God's presence. Um, there's, there's nothing there. We can just go boldly to, to God our Father. And it's all because of what um, Jesus has, has done for us. Again, sharing and shed, sorry, shedding his life uh, for us and shedding his blood. Um, and really, I think there's these points that, 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 that that's it. There's, those are my seven points, but really they're, they're so powerful in a sense that like, you know, we may at times feel like we're far away from God or that, um, uh, you know, that we're in a bit of a rut in terms of like sin and so forth. But I think it's it's about what the Bible says, like let, in Psalm 107 verse 2, it says, um, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so um, we should really be encouraged to speak these things out. Um, and as we're doing so, I think it, it really does sort of help us to to really see how 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 free we are in, in God. It really shows us how, you know, we've been brought back. You know, we have, uh, we're clean. We are justified. We are sanctified. We're reckoned righteous in God's eyes. We're ultimately we're looking perfect in God's eyes, and that can only be attained through um, through Jesus because He was perfect, and and clearly of our own religion we're not. Um, but in Him, we are, and we're continually covered in Him. So we should, you know, really, really embrace that and, and just and run with it. Um, and again, I think all this was done basically for us um, to recognize that um, we are family with each other and then also with God. And I think that's a really important point that um, this new covenant was a much more sort of um, a much more personal covenant, a much more um, family orientated thing and I think that's what God wants us to understand um, in the very notion of him giving his blood uh, for us um, and covering us in that blood he's saying you're of my bloodline <laughs> basically now you're of my family you are my family and that's really what I want to end today is just um, in this we are welcomed in to his family and so we have complete access to God and, uh, yeah, embrace it, run with it, use it, use the blood, speak the blood over your lives. Tell, you know, tell it, tell, tell a friend <laughs> as well. You know, I have direct access to God because of Jesus. That's it. Amen. <laughs>